Hello everybody, my name is Zane Zunkami Blaylock from Essence of Zen, and today we're going to cover how to install modded Minecraft launchers so that you can do things such as play on a, a Feed the Beast mod pack. Stay tuned. Now, generally speaking, you're going to have multiple choices as to how you might want to uh, play modded Minecraft. Uh, you have a few choices at your disposal. So we do have certain type of multi-MC launchers, but you also have some more dedicated direct ones. So for the dedicated direct launchers, you have things like the official Feed the Beast uh, mod pack launcher, which you can find on feed-the-beast.com. And you also have CurseForge, which has their own unique little uh, app that actually has capabilities to utilize Minecraft and mod packs. So we're going to pass over these two direct launchers and we're gonna focus on uh, choosing one out of the three multi Minecraft launchers. So just to be aware, there are three main ones you can particularly choose from. There is Prism Launcher, there is Multi MC, as well as Poly MC. Each of these launchers has their own uh, history as well as uh, particular choices of development. So I'm just going to focus on which I recommend and that'll be Prism Launcher. So from this actual page, prismlauncher.org, you should be able to simply download the tool. We're going to do that now and we're going to install it. You have various different options to choose from when it comes to the downloading and installing. If you use Windows, I would say just go for the installer.exe. But if you know what you're doing and you have preferences of utilizing uh, confined instances of Minecraft across multiple devices, then you might want the portable. If you are running on an ARM-based machine, then you want the ARM installer. Or if you want, for whatever reason, the legacy builds, you go for the legacy. In this case, I'm going to go with the installer. As we run our launcher setup, the .exe for the installer on Windows, we're going to basically go through and click Next. I do not like desktop shortcuts to be installed automatically, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I do want the Start Menu shortcut, so I'm going to click Next. So next we get to choose the install location. For you, install it wherever uh, you prefer. I'm going to leave it as is currently. Once the installation is complete, then we want to simply run the launcher. During the run of the launcher, we'll be brought to the basic setup configuration, and it's going to ask you things like your language. So I speak American English, so I'm going to choose American English. And here we have an uh, interesting aspect, right? So on the second set, we see that uh, it, it wants to choose the preferred Java version, right? So in my experience, Prism Launcher and all of the mod packs underneath it or how it utilizes to launch mod packs, it prefers to have a specific version of Java, but we'll get to that point when we get there. Do note how much memory you are having set as your minimum and your maximum. Uh, do be mindful of your total amount of memory. If you do control shift escape, you can bring up the task manager and in the performance screen, you can actually see how much memory you have available for my computer that I'm using to record on here. It has a maximum of 16 gigs. So if I look down at the maximum memory allocation set for the, the launcher, I see that it is set to 4096 megabytes. So that roughly translates to four gigs. I could double this if I so choose, but again, let's just leave it as is for now. So I'm going to click finish. And here we are brought to the basic look for the application. And in our top right, we're going to see accounts. What we want to do is click that and we want to go to manage accounts. When we come to this menu, it's going to say, hey, welcome. If you're new here, you can click the add button to add your Mojang or Minecraft account. 
So what we're going to actually do, because Mojang as well as Minecraft accounts are now deprecated, you know, at least at this point of communication, so we're going to add a Microsoft account. We do this, and it's going to open up the uh, link for us that says window or sorry www.microsoft.com/link, and it's going to give us a code to do so. We want to copy that code and then click this link, and it'll bring us to our browser. Once at our browser, we want to go ahead and paste that code. It's going to ask us to sign in, do so, and then enter the password. Now for me, I have two-factor authentication, and then when I click verify, it'll ask, do I want to stay signed in? I do. And I am now signed in. Return back to Prism. It is now saying getting the author uh, authorization to access Mojang services. Alrighty, and we now see that my account has been added. So I'm going to go ahead and close out on this particular window. And we are back to the main window for Prism Launcher. And I can see that my skin for my Minecraft character is showing up underneath this account. Fantastic. Now we want to go ahead and actually add an instance. In my case, what I want to add is an FTB mod pack. Um, let's go ahead and filter. But I would like Dire Wolf 20s 1.18. And when you figure out which mod pack you want to select, do be mindful that if you are aiming to play on someone's server, you also need to know what version of the mod pack they're utilizing. In this particular case, I want to click Dire Wolf 20 1.18 and then go down to the version selected and make sure that I am on the latest 1.10.3. So we're going to stick with 1.18, 1.10.3, and then click OK. Now it's going to essentially start pulling in all of the needed files and requirements. And so it's going to prepare by getting set manifest. That manifest holds information about what mods you require and etc. So now that we have been downloading the, the mods from this mod pack, we have a message that pops up that states the following files are not available for download in third party launchers. You will need to manually download them and add them to the instance. So essentially all that basically boils down to is essentially let you know what folders are being watched and what uh, mods are not able to be downloaded by the actual launcher. In this particular case, it is nasty mobs 1.18.2-1.0.10.jar. So we're going to go ahead and just click this link that points us to that mod and we see that it is actually hosted on curseforge.com. If we click this, we will be brought to said URL where we can actually download that mod and it'll take us five minutes or three, five seconds to basically start this little dialogue menu. When that dialogue you know, comes up, we want to download it into the downloads folder because that's what folder is being watched. So once I've downloaded it and put it in that folder, we now see that it has been found with the checkmark logo followed by found at whatever directory the uh, you know watch directory is. So we're now going to click OK. Now, typically we should be all fine, but there may be other areas that will come back to bite you in the behind. For instance, let's go ahead and try to launch this instance of Minecraft by double clicking this particular icon. Now it's downloading the acquired library files and we'll soon try to kick off launching the instance. All right, when trying to launch this, we got a, uh, a console log menu. If we continue to scroll down, we should see an error message that says, this instance is not compatible with Java version eight. Please switch to one of the following Java versions for this instance, Java version 17. And it says, go to instance Java settings to change your Java version or disable the Java compatibility check if you know what you are doing. So flat out, it lets us know what version it wants. It wants Java version 17. So, well, we have to go and grab Java version 17.
Java is maintained by the company Oracle. So if we actually do a simple search of download Java 17, we should be able to actually find the oracle.com Java Technologies Java SE JDK 17 archive downloads. So I'm going to go here and we will have a link in the description down below. And what I want is not the arm, not Debian, not RPM, but I do want the Windows 64 installer. I'm going to go with the installer. So I'm going to click this link here and download it to my downloads location. So we're going to actually go ahead and run the Java version 17 installer. Preparing to install. Very simple. We're going to go through and click next. We're going to essentially verify where we are installing this. This will be in our C directory, program files, Java JDK-17. Super simple. We're going to click next, let it do its thing. And what's also important to note is this does not remove the previous versions of Java that I have installed on the system. So now that we have it installed, we're going to close that down reopen prism launcher and we can do independent settings so if i actually right click on this particular instance i can change just this instance's uh, settings and so you'll notice here under settings for this instance i can actually change the java installation the memory allocated for this particular instance or etc but what i want is the global settings so this will be my default settings for the uh, instances that are tied to Prism Launcher across every single one, unless I specify a specific settings for a specific um, instance. So I'm going to close this. We could click op uh, open global settings here, but I'm going to close this down and I'm actually going to click settings here, which is our global instance. So if we go down to the Java section, we can again see our minimum memory allocation, maximum memory allocation, as well as our perm gen. We're gonna leave those fine as they are for now. And we're actually going to click auto detect for our Java runtime. So notice how when we click this, we have our original three. If I click refresh, we should now see version 17 because it's a newly downloaded uh, and installed version of Java. I'm going to select that and click OK. And now we actually have Java version 17 set as our default global Java version for all instances going forward. So if I click close now and then I either double click with the left mouse uh, button to launch this or I can just actually launch it here and just do launch. Now this should launch just fine. And as we can see, the game is up and running. We can click single player or do multiplayer or the like. And um, yeah. So for some extra last minute tips while we're here at the end of this particular video, it was taking a bit of time to um, uh, load the game so what I'm actually going to do is go into our settings under Java and I'm going to actually double the amount of maximum memory allocations basically from 4 gigs to 8 gigs basically being half of this computer's total memory of the system. If you are curious about uh, the values to use here uh, all you have to really remember and you can actually use a calculator app for this right as I mentioned earlier, 4096 is four gigs. So if you do 4096 and divide that by four, then that basically tells us that 1024 uh, megabytes is essentially one gigabyte. So I'm going to take the 1024 and multiply it by eight to get 8192. And that'll basically be our number for eight gigs. And just like that, 
that's going to be my last change and that is the video everybody if you would like us to have more tutorials on how to basically utilize different launchers please add them into the comment section down below and we can do an in-depth guide on setting up different minecraft instances in those particular launchers but i've been zane the coming blog from instance of zen i will see you all in the next video but until then as always take care Watch wins and they